So, what is this guy doing up there? And what's going on here? Well, it all starts with this. This is one of those cheap high voltage generators that you find all over Amazon and AliExpress. And I'm gonna do something with this that I haven't seen anyone else do on YouTube before. I used inverted commas there because these often claim to output voltages into the hundreds of thousands, but this is complete BS. Judging by the gap of around one centimeter, this one is outputting around 10 to 15,000 volts. We can make things a little more spicy with two of them. Now, I actually have a good reason for using two of these, and it's not to increase power. I'll explain a little later why I did this, and honestly it made a big difference. Out of interest, if anyone watching has done anything cool with these, comment below. I'd love to know what else you can do with them. Alright, let's see if we can use LEGO to make this thing do something really cool. We'll start by building a LEGO spark gap. I want this one to be adjustable, so this gear rack will allow us to do just that. For the electrodes, I'm going to use these two steel bolts that fortunately fit straight through the LEGO holes. Now we have our two terminals, and I want a visual indicator to see just how big the gap is from a distance, because I really don't want to get too close to what it's going to feed. Then we'll need a nice big Lego switch. These copper terminals here will do nicely. And I'm going to pop a wheel on top to make it easy to flip without having to fiddle around too much. Hmm, it works, but it seems a little weak. I'm going to replace these electrodes with copper. There we go, that's better. Okay, this is working, but it's messy. Let me see if I can tidy it up a bit. And build a small cage for cable management. Now I'm gonna wire it up. And stick it all together. And finally connect these two wires. These two are gonna be important later. Nice, violent but nice. Time to give this thing a real boost. We're going to dump that energy from each spark into a secondary coil with a ton of windings. These pieces will form the tower. And I'll wrap around 300 turns of thin 32 gauge wire around it. And finally, to allow us to dump that energy into the secondary, we'll build a small base tower for the primary. This shape here will allow us to make easy adjustments to the primary windings. For the primary, I'm going to use this thick 12 gauge wire, around five and a half turns of it. And now we can pop the secondary into the primary housing. Lastly then, we'll connect the primary to the spark gap using those two important wires I mentioned earlier. Hey, not bad. 
It's not particularly pretty, but it's functional. And most importantly for me, it's nice and compact. So, does this thing actually work? Let me try the bare wire first. Ah, f*** you! Yeah, it works. But it doesn't seem safe for Mr. Technic Man here, so I'm gonna keep him at a distance for now. It's also quite bright outside, and we need to wait for it to get darker to really see what this thing is made of. We also don't have a top load yet, so let's fix that. This here is a wheel that I wrapped some copper tape around. And I want to test the spark gaps so that we can see the different frequencies. Okay, until now, Mr. Technic Man has just been lying around looking pretty. Let's give him a job to do. I'm gonna let him hold the business end from now on. Let's see how he likes it. There we go, now we can really see what's going on here. These are some beautiful plasma streamers. Unfortunately, my camera can't quite pick up what the eye is seeing, but I'm trying my best here with some slow shutter. By the way, if you'd like to see more of these wacky experiments with LEGO, feel free to subscribe. Now, the reason I used two of these generators in series is because of resonance frequency. A Tesla coil ideally needs the primary and the secondary coils to resonate at the same frequency. The closer their resonant frequencies, the more efficiently the primary can transfer energy to the secondary, and the higher the secondary can boost the voltage. Using only one of these generators, I needed a much bigger coil. On the left here, this is my first iteration. It is lovely, but it's way too big, and I just wanted something more compact. Which is how something so small can do this. By using two of these generators in series, their output capacitors halved in capacitance, allowing me to drop the size of the coil while maintaining the same output. I just think it looks so much more impressive having this output from such a compact little LEGO model. Really what I wanted for this project was to make a Tesla coil that's just easy for anyone to make, even if they have little to no understanding of Tesla coil theory. And of course it helps if you have some spare LEGO. If there's anything more you'd like to know, just comment below. Alright, I've shocked myself enough for you guys. 